Thanks, Chrissy. What an exciting time to be in the uranium industry. Uranium is the hottest commodity on the planet. I just want to see if I've got a reaction to see if anybody was awake there. Uh, very clearly for a number of reasons. But uh, it, it is a very exciting time. We are one of the very few uranium companies. Uh, your uh, controller's not working real well. There it is, that's better. Yeah, no, I had to use the other one. Um, we, for a long while, were the only company on the ASX with uranium in our name uh, because we're very proud of the industry we're in. But there's been a few opportunities come lately and, uh, and use uranium in their name as well. But, but we've got direct exposure to uranium in Namibia and Australia, two great jurisdictions for mining. Uh, Namibia is one of the big producers, as, as you say, longest running uranium mine in the world. We've got 142 million pound of assets in both of those jurisdictions. We've got an extensive and diverse project pipeline from greenfields exploration through to uh, commencing indicator drill programs moving into studies. We've got a patented process we developed in-house called Upgrade. It lowers the cost base by approximately 50% for capital and operating. Uh, it reduces the mass to be leached to less than 5%, so a very great, a great process for us. We've got an aggressive drill program. We've got four drill rigs underway in Namibia at the moment and a fifth one coming uh, next month. We've got a small but experienced and dedicated team. Uh, we don't spend money, too much money at the top. We spend the money on exploration on the ground. Uh, and we're strategically located in Namibia. I'll tell you that a little bit later as to why. And what an exciting time, as I say, to be in uranium. It's the cleanest form of energy on the planet. Uh, it is something we need going forward. You will have heard us talk about, or people talk about lithium and graphite and batteries. I'll let you in a little secret. Batteries store energy, batteries discharge energy. Batteries don't generate energy. So it's got to come from somewhere. So the more batteries we've got, the more energy we need. And if you want low carbon emission energy, look no further than us. So from a corporate overview, small number of shares on issue for an Australian listed company, uh, a lot of cash in the bank uh, to keep us going for a while. And uh, we have a widespread of shareholders. The, the um, skin in the game for the board of management's in the order of 5.1%. Our two largest shareholders are the uh, ETFs uh, out of the US uh, who, who love uranium. So uranium, Namibia and Australia, uh, we've got a diverse range of assets, as I say, in terms of the project pipeline. In the Copies area, or the, sorry, the Nami area, we've got the Copies project, our flagship. Central Orongo is the Maranika area. And then across into Australia, Northern Territory is our Angela project. So there, there are, as I say, the different levels uh, of stages of projects. And, we have the largest land position for nuclear fuels in Namibia. If you put all the other Paladin, Arano, Rossing, uh, Deep Yellow, Bannerman together, they still haven't come up to our land position. We've made four discoveries in the last four years in Namibia. Uh, because we're looking for paleo channels that are, that are old, uranium that's leached out of the old granites over time and then um, it travels down through river systems and precipitated when the conditions are right, we, um, we're looking for the uranium in those paleo channels. Uh, generally less than 25 metres deep. There's a lot of them up the north in the central Longo area and down the south, uh, down in the Namib area. But so we like Namibia. It's the only country in the world with a dedicated uranium association. The Namibian Uranium Association, the conduit between explorers, producers, developers, government, stakeholders, general public, they do a fantastic job of promoting the industry. And very supportive government. Uh, you know, they all understand uranium. The people in Namibia have two, as I say, 48 years. That's two generations of Namibians very familiar with uranium mining. They're not woke. So am I allowed to use that word, Chrissy? Uh, woke like we are in Australia. Uh, so they completely understand it. They're not terrified by it. So the Copies Project is, is our flagship in Namibia. Um, you would have heard people talk about their drill programs and you know, how deep they are. We drill 28 metre holes. They cost us a thousand bucks a hole. We have four drill rigs. They st st stay on the weekend at, at site. Drillers go out with our crew on Monday morning from Swakopmon. They drill 25 holes per rig per week each. They come back into town on a Friday night and have their weekend in, in luxury of Swakopmon. So 25 holes per week for four rigs is 100 holes a week. That's a lot of holes. We have a drill rig, another drill rig starting on, on next month. That'll be five rigs working in Namibia flat out. So 125 holes coming out of Namibia every week. So the Copies Project, we have, this is the resource area we've got. We're still drilling up the north of the, uh, the tenement and we're also drilling down in the south all the way. So we've got a strike length of 20 kilometres. We're expecting a resource update uh, next month on this. 
and then we'll commence an indicator drill program. We want to do indicator drilling, we want to get this resource to a stage where we can start uh, economic studies, financial studies, and we can also uh, do metallurgical tests right on our um, upgrade process, which I'll talk about shortly. But the one thing I really like about this resource, and no disrespect to anybody before me, but 500, 800, 950 metres deep, 95% of our resource is within 15 metres of surface. 50% is within six and a half metres of surface. That's as shallow as they come. So low cost mining operation, low strip ratio is what it's gonna be. And when you couple that with our upgrade process, it's really gonna be a low cost uh, operation. So we're excited about what this offers. Um, it's free dig for the first three to four metres, and then after that, we'll use a surface miner, something you use to rip up bitumen roads around the place. So it'll cut it half a metre deep, uh, and we'll get through this ore body uh, nicely with a, uh, a good outcome for us. So moving across to Australia, we need to talk about Australia. We have assets here. We've got £48 million. Pound. We bought those in December of 2019. The world went to shit um, shortly after that. We couldn't do anything. Uh, we were certainly justified as being the most isolated city in the world. It's only lately we've been able to move back again. Uh, we've done some work, seismic work at Angela. That's identified the lens, this um, sandstone-hosted lens that carries the mineralisation. It's also identified another lens beneath it. Never been drilled before. We want to go and drill that, see if it's, uh, see if it's got mineralisation. Then we talk about uh, Minerva. That was explored and found in 1978. Hasn't been drilled since. Ten holes hit intercepts greater than 10,000 ppm. So some high grade. We want to go and drill that, understand the structure, and then work out how to explore it further. The other thing about our upgrade process, we did some work on the Angela deposit. Uh, it's got a high acid consumption because of the calcite content. We did four lab tests and nobody can say they can optimise in four lab tests. We reduced the acid consumption by 80%. So we know this upside further on that. So we're going to get some drilling done in Australia uh, over, the, over the, um, this year. So from a news flow point of view, I talked about copies. We're going to finish our um, inferred drilling program uh, next month. We'll announce an update on the resource. Move into indicator drilling. We're going to cross uh, in April to start digging some test pits to um, get some samples for metallurgical test work and ultimately for a pilot plan in the future. That will then feed into a test break program, which we then want to use uh, to uh, dis demonstrate that upgrade works well. Here are Capri, both discoveries, other th three of the four copies here are Capri. Want to take those to Maiden Resources. And uh, we've got green, yeah, thanks for that. Um, we've got greenfield exploration to do. I'm just thinking I've got a couple more slides to go. Um, so I want to get an upgrade. Uh, upgrade is a process we developed in-house what it does is users commonly use unit operations, but we configure it in an unconventional manner. And, and the reason they're configured unconventionally is what we do is we concentrate the gang mineral and throw it away. So that's counterintuitive for what you normally do. You normally concentrate uranium, but we concentrate the calcites, the clay, and we throw them away. So hence it's innovative and patentable. We have three patents around the world. It reduces the amount of mass to be leached by down to greater than 95%, down to less than 5%. So you're now akin to a base metal operation where you can transport that concentrate off site. In Namibia, I talked about the strategic nature of our location. There's, Rossing have been there for 48 years. Have they got capacity in the leach refinery? Yes. Could they take a concentrate? Yes. So we wouldn't then need to necessarily build a leach refinery, and that leach refinery could have not having to build that reduces the costs even further. So we've got optionality about how we, how we develop these projects. Uh, we've got a, a ready, taker of concentrate, uh, and this will add significant value to our projects. It'll bring our projects closer together. Uh, the tyranny of distance is reduced uh, because of the, the reduced mass. So environmental benefits is many of those, but cost benefits there are a lot of. So an example, we took the Maranica uh, grade from 93 ppm to 5,000 ppm. So that gave that project to life, gave us confidence that we could go and use upgrade elsewhere. So we're excited about, you know, you look at a project like Copies, within 15 metres of surface, uh, and with an a, a, a upgrade process that reduces the, the cost significantly. Two, one, Chrissy. Thank you. So uh, <laughs> just to finish, this is what copies looks like, right? So you don't have to worry about animals or vegetation, Chrissy. So you could even go there and not be worried. Thanks, Chair. Thanks for that. <laughs>